Dark Souls. <laughs> Hey everybody, I can only assume you guys are all here because as the title might suggest, you want to watch somebody beat Dark Souls 1 dagger only in the time it takes to bake bread. Now as a disclaimer, this is going to be some real amateur stuff. I am not a god at speedrunning, nor am I a professional baker, so if you came here today expecting greatness, then that's your fault for thinking so highly of me. If you see me mess up or make a big oopsie or something, let me know in the comments, call me a doo-doo head or something. For this run, I will not be baking and playing simultaneously because that would just be unreasonable, so I baked first to get an overall time, and then I raced against that time. With this bread specifically, I was able to finish baking around 2 hours and 2 minutes. Now to begin our run, we choose a name that perfectly describes how we feel after so much failure. And then from here, we choose Thief for our class, and for our gift, we choose Twin Humanities. We choose the Thief class because he has two things we need. The Master Key, which is going to help us unlock doors, obviously. And the Bandit's Knife, which in my opinion, is the most crazy dagger in the game and to me it's insane that you could spawn in with it. And for the twin humanities, we need as much as we can get for the beta chaos skip. So after we clear the asylum, we actually head to Firelink Shrine from here, because where the else would you go, and then we go and collect some items. After gathering all the shit we need, we head to our first stop, the Undead Merchant, shortly after our first encounter with the Hellkite. Now she's gonna sell us a key, which we're gonna need later to open a door for an NPC merchant, who's gonna sell us magic weapon. When it comes to the bosses in this run, I'm not going to be talking about all of them, but when it comes to the Taurus Demon, I absolutely fucking bamboozle this man. Nah, I'm joking. It went more like this. Now, as a little twist, we actually ended up killing the Taurus Demon just for his souls. Instead, we're going to head through Darkroot Basin to get to the Undead Parish. Before leaving Darkroot Basin, we have this Crystal Lizard that we need to kill because he has a chance to drop a bunch of stuff. Preferably, I'm looking for the Titanite Chunks that he drops, and luckily we actually end up getting two Titanite Chunks from him, which is super useful. After finally getting to Big Dong Andre, we use all the souls we've collected up until this point to upgrade our Bandit's Knife to plus four before Gargoyles. On the way to Gargoyles, we end up picking up our first of many Firekeeper Souls, because if you guys didn't know, if you consume a Firekeeper Soul, it gives you 5 humanity, and we need as many as we can get, like I said earlier.
After defeating the gargoyles, we bone back to the Undead Parish to level up for the first time this run. We put points into Atonement for an extra slot, points into Strength so we can actually wield the Grass Crest Shield, and finally we put points into Intelligence so we can use Magic Weapon when we get it later. Once we finally get to the lower undead berg, we use the key we bought earlier to rescue the merchant that's going to end up selling us magic weapon later on, and then we make sure to grab the staff that's in the room with him. And just to go off script here for a second, fuck the enemies on the run to the Capra Demon. They are so garbage, and for the love of god, I cannot exaggerate how many times they have ruined my runs. If I don't quit to the main menu to de-aggro them, Nine times out of ten, they're gonna corner me, and they are going to fuck me. You know, it's funny that I brought up having to de-aggro the dogs and the bandits on the way to the Capra Demon earlier, because as you can see, there is a dog at the Fog Gate with plenty more behind him, ready to absolutely destroy me once that Fog Gate goes down. So, I have to de-aggro them again. After defeating the Capra Demon, instead of making a right to go to the deaths, we end up making a left up these stairs to go talk to another undead merchant. The reason why I make a little pit stop is because I need three items. First, I grab moss because Blighttown is shit and I don't want to be poisoned. I buy resin because as you'll soon discover, even though I'm getting all these magic weapon buffs, they don't deal damage to Seath because he's just fucking resistant against it. And the reason why I buy a homer bone is because I kind of use them as a get out of jail free card just in case I fuck up. After boning back to the Undead Parish, you, you guys are going to be hearing that a lot. I end up heading back to Andre and leveling up my bandit's knife to plus five, and then we head to Quaylight. But first, we gotta make a stop or two. When it comes to this boss fight, the only thing that's really remarkable is that I do poo poo for damage. Like, I, I genuinely do so little damage, um, so I'm not going to be showing you the entire boss fight. The only thing I will say is for the love of God, avoid this explosion because it will just outright kill you. Yep, let's just uh, skip. After ringing the second bell, we bone back to the Undead Parish, and we talk to Andre so we can level up our Bandit's Knife to plus 7, and then we go level up. When it comes to leveling up here, I dump points into Intelligence until I get 25 so that I may use every single magic weapon spell, and then from there, I dump points into Vitality in what was supposed to be Endurance, however, I put it in Atonement, because you know I'm just... stupid? I take the long way because that ball can go straight to hell. The Iron Golem boss fight was a tricky boss fight to kind of map out throughout my runs, because prior to this run, I never ended up picking up two large Titanite shards in Blighttown. And without them, I was never able to get my Bandit's Knife to plus 7, but once I finally got it to plus 7, I finally had enough DPS to knock him out of the arena. Once we make it to Anor Londo, we pick up our first bonfire, and then we head to get those big fat bonkers. I mean, that Lord Vessel. I, I, definitely, I definitely wrote that in my script, so... Lord Vessel. Unfortunately, on the way to those cannons, we end up dying for the first time this run, trying to knock down the chandelier for great magic weapons so we can pick it up later.
Also, we end up picking up Havel's armor because I just want to make the Four Kings fight just as easy as possible. Our last stop before we head to Orenstein and Smo is going to be the giant blacksmith where he's going to level up our bandit's knife to plus 10. And then right after that, we go outside to the balcony out here and pick up one large titanite. Fuck me. Titanite. <laughs> titanite chunk. When it comes to Orenstein and Smo, there really isn't too much to say. I mean, yes, even though I did get a good amount of practice in, I did die my first time trying to fight them. However, my second time, I ended up beating them just by the skin of my teeth, I mean, I absolutely slammed my OJ. And let me tell you, that looks like a fuck ton of OJ. However, all the pain it took to stomach all that OJ was worth it, because after defeating Orenstein and Smo, I can finally lay my eyes on that <laughs> However, the post-nut clarity hits pretty hard, and I drop a fucking nuke on Guinevere. Now what did we learn? Nothing, wench! Shina Kazing! I banish her, and then we head out. Before doing anything with the Lord Vessel, we head back to Firelink Shrine, and then from here, we head to New Londo Ruins so we could pick up some very important items. And just to go on a little tangent, despite what I said earlier about the dogs and the bandits on the way to the Kappa Demon, the ghosts in this room are by far way more annoying, because for some reason, they could just pick and choose when they kill you on the slider. While on this little scavenger hunt of mine, I end up dying for the third time this run, attempting to pick up a Titanite chunk. However, we do bounce back and pick it up later. After boning back to Firelink Shrine, we end up heading to the merchant that's underneath this bridge area. He's the boss armor merchant guy. He's gonna sell us Lightning Pine Resin for our fight with Seath later. After the boss armor merchant guy, we end up heading back to the Undead Parish to talk to Andre so he can level up our bandit's knife to plus 13, which is going to be our maximum this run. After getting all the small stuff out of the way first, we head to Firelink Altar so we can finally place the Lord Vessel, and then from here, we head to the Duke's Archives to fight Seath. Now after getting to Dukes, we have to go through our mandatory death with Seath, where we then get teleported to the jail, where we begin our journey to rescue Big Hat Loop. Luckily for us, the Selkie isn't too far. So as long as we haven't collected any bonfires between spawning into the jail and picking up the key, we can just bone back to the jail cell and then go talk to Logan. And once we talk to him, he'll teleport to a location where we can buy from him, and while we're here, we might as well go and pick up this Firekeeper soul in the back. When it comes to Seath, I would say he's probably my most hated boss fight across all my runs because he is just so damn annoying to fight because he takes so long. He can't be damaged by any of my magic spells because he's just so resistant against them. I might as well be tickling him if I use it. So instead, I have to entirely rely on the resins of Mario. Lucky me, however, because I wasn't a complete idiot this run, and I was able to defeat Seath on my first try on like many other runs before for some reason. Regardless, I end up heading back to the Undead Parish so I can go talk to Andre and buy the Crest of Artorias, because our next boss is gonna be Seath. Not Seath. Fuck me. to the Four Kings, Havel's armor genuinely, and I mean genuinely, makes this boss fight so trivial, it's, it's crazy. There is not one attack I can honestly remember off the top of my head that even got me remotely scared that I was going to die. You can tank through everything. I mean, besides grabs, but you get the point. It's just so easy using Havel's armor. I'm at the gun. After the Four Kings, our next boss, false. For the love of God, I wish I could speak English. Our next boss is gonna be Nido.
I'm gonna be honest with you, what I do to Pinwheel is the equivalent of me whipping out my meaty dong and slapping him with it. After defeating Pinwheel, we head into the Tomb of Giants, which is by far one of the more annoying parts of these runs, because prior to even starting these runs, I hadn't played Dark Souls in like a year, so I completely forgot where to go. Regardless, through trial and error, I was able to make it through all the darkness and finally make it to Nito's house, but that doesn't stop me from still having to take mandatory fall damage and then still fight three skeletons alongside Nito, which respawn. I'm sorry. I can't contain how much I love this boss fight. It's just, it's just mm, perfection. I'm joking. Who at FromSoft decided that this was anywhere close to okay? Besides my massive biases aside, this boss fight wasn't too bad. Like, like I complained about earlier, the only thing you really have to worry about is a mandatory damage, which just delete your health bar. <clears throat> but also, the skeletons, you know, they're not too hard to handle. Nito, nine times out of ten, will kill him, or will kill them himself. I like it, Kudji. And all you have to do is just dodge those attacks, which he misses 99% of. After defeating Dry Bones, we waste no time and we head to the Demon Ruins so we can unlock the skip to the Bed of Chaos using all the humanity we've saved up to this point. Open sesame! Upon getting to the bed of chaos, I just want to be as transparent with you guys as possible. I hate this boss fight. I hate it so much. This was one of the few boss fights I've ever fought in this game that made me want to smash and punch drywall when I was a kid. However, this is actually one of the smoothest times I've ever beat this boss, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. After defeating the Beta Chaos with a fat bonk to the noggin, we end up heading back to the Firelink Altar, where we place all the Lord Souls into the Lord Vessel so we can go and fight Gwen. Mechanically speaking, Gwen is an easy boss fight. You know, just parry the hell out of him and beat his attacks with your Estus drinking. However, for some reason, I just wanted to prolong this fight by dying. Because I suck. And what's scarier is that even after the first time I died, coming back, I almost died a second time, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I would have bursted into tears if that were to have happened. Luckily for you and me, I finally clutched it, and we can close this speedrun by parrying Gwen to death, and then lighting the bonfire. And finally, after putting in, honestly, way more time and effort than I ever should have to begin with into this, I can finally say I beat Dark Souls 1 in the time it took to bake bread. And as you guys can see, the bread came out absolutely fantastic. Honestly, I wish I made it a little bit rounder. But the one thing I should warn you not to do is cut into it right as you bring it out the oven because it is very hot. <coughs> but also, it's just better to have it wait, honestly. I don't know the science behind why, but as long as you wait for it to cool down, it should taste better. I, I don't know. I've been baking bread this long and I have no clue. And uh, if you've stayed this long towards the end of the video, this is the stats at which I finished the game with. And besides that, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I put a lot of effort into this. Um, honestly, probably more than I should have. I, I don't mean that like I fucking hate you. I mean that like I'm an idiot and I, this is my first video and I'm starting to learn all this. So hopefully you guys stay and you know, catch my next videos. You guys have a good one. See you.